seeing people bloody, from shaving. Like in, when I was in bed, people was crying. It was an experience. A lot of people, I didn't get no sleep myself because I thought they was going to come in. But quite an experience. Hit the lights. I'm not, I'm not in control anymore. You know, we make them all the same. We make them all even. Different. I never had my hair that short before. Um, and you know, I jog, I'm a pretty goofy looking guy. I got big ears and a big nose. And so having no hair kind of offset everything. I was excited to get the uniforms, definitely. Both the ABUs and the blues, uh, you, you get a different sense of pride, I think, for it. I did not know we had to get so many shots. I feel like a guinea pig or something. I mean, you're getting poked and poked. I'm just anxious. I hate it. Oh, I'm afraid of needles, so it was pretty bad. I didn't enjoy it too much. I just kind of closed my eyes, prayed for it to end. By getting to see everyone march together is a privilege, in my opinion. The couple times I have gotten to march, uh, the flight and smaller elements, I really enjoy doing just to see everyone marching in. So I think it's something that's really nice to see. Right! Hurts! The drill, you're teaching them the discipline along with teamwork. You know, if, if a couple of people in the flight don't want to march or don't put in the effort to march like everyone else, then it, then it brings down everyone. It's not just those couple ones. So it's, it's instilling more teamwork in the even for those building blocks for us to teach discipline. And of course, we march everywhere in basic training. There's not a place we don't march. After we leave for the night, they're up in the dorm working on it together. So that way when we come in the next morning, we're ready to go and, and uh, they don't want to let us down. So they work on it on their own because they want to succeed at it. Left, middle, right. Left, middle, right. Left, middle, right. Definitely should have done a little bit more PT at home before coming here. But doing as much PT as we did, it's definitely helped. And I passed my PT fail, and I don't, we all have come together as a flight, being able to help each other and push each other, especially during PT. Because I was doing them incorrectly, I did four push-ups when I got here, and I ended up with 45 on my last eval. Uh, push-ups push -ups and sit-ups, I think I really progressed the most in. Let's go. All the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. Pretty much you see the ones that want to succeed, the ones who uh, actually put effort in before they came, and uh, they kind of motivate the other ones. You'll get one or two that are kind of lazy, don't really, don't really care or, or didn't really exercise before they came in, but they'll see the rest of the males pick it up and run, so they'll kind of get motivated and want to keep up with them. I didn't expect the run to be like 30 minutes every morning, 35 minutes. I expect it to be just a mile and a half every time. Um, and all the different calisthenics and everything blew my mind. I, I personally think that they have a hard job taking someone who has no discipline, no anything coming from a civilian to be someone who is in the Air Force and having a lot of discipline and having the training that we have. 15 seconds. Our, my expectations for them right now are to uh, make sure that 
that they're listening to what I tell them to do. Um, I don't expect to be perfect every time, all the time, first time, but it should be darn close. Because all we're expecting to do is listen to us what we tell you to do and do it. We got a chance here to take 60 civilians and, and make them in it. Warrior Airmen. You know, that's one of the Air Force's motto, Warrior Airmen. Arms, don't get up. Move to the high crawl position, then crawl. Crawl, crawl, crawl. Raise yourself up so your weapon's not on the ground. Being a Warrior Airman, you have to have a certain set of morals. It causes you to be more disciplined. Discipline is definitely something that you have to carry in order to be a warrior. Ready, strike! Ready, strike! It's a nice feeling knowing that I'm doing something with my life and not just sitting at home doing nothing and being able to protect a lot of people and help everyone out. It's great. Standing up for your country, um, your family, your friends, I mean, it's a big thing. It's a big deal. Uh, it just felt like a cloud of smoke. You went down my throat and my nose, and I couldn't cough. I mean, I, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't. It felt like I wanted to throw up immediately. And then they tell you the whole time, do not run, do not run. Your TI tell you before you go, do not run. The first instinct is going to be to run. So in your head, you're saying, I'm not going to run, I'm not going to run. But once you take that first breath, all you think about is getting out the door. I couldn't feel my throat. I couldn't feel my throat. I was coughing, snot was running down, eyes was watering. And I just remember the woman telling me to go, try to get out there as quick as possible. <coughs> but it, it was not fun. Snot, eyes, you can't see, watering nonstop. You just want to itch your face and whatever, but you can't. But uh, it was fun. It was, you know, adrenaline rush kind of thing. Woo. It was definitely interesting to see what people are using and kind of know what to look out for a little bit. Um, when we did a little run and, and he stopped us because there was a pile of rocks. The whole other time there was no other pile of rocks. I at first didn't think anything of it, but then when he started to explain it, it made more sense. It made more sense what to look out for and know what to try and see what the enemy is seeing. Make sense? Yes, ma'am. Right. Um, cross their waist behind them. Put their left arm behind your head and over your shoulder. Stand up. I just move them a little bit. Those, those classes really helped, knowing that if something happens to them, that I can assist in some way, shape, or form to be able to help them, that I, that I know what I'm doing, that I don't have to stand there and watch them bleed out, watch them lay there with a broken arm or broken leg. I know what to do. I know how to get them help. And Mark, get set, go. You know, you pick it up, you know exactly how to handle it, what to do with it. Uh, in case something happens, you know the procedures you need to go through. It's almost just like an extension of yourself. I never thought the Air Force would have to break down weapons and put them back together. And when I first heard that, I was like, oh my God, I know I'm a fail at that. We had two minutes to do that. And then once I really got acquainted with my weapon and I learned all the parts and where everything goes and how everything works, it became like second nature to me. I could take it apart, put it together, probably about a minute. I only need the full two minutes. And that's something that I really surprised myself with. Safety. Magazine. Chamber. Safety. I really love the techniques and guess the fact of shooting the gun. It's, it's, it's an adrenaline rush, if you ask me. Pressure the entire time that goes through, okay? 
and just continue to squeeze after the pull. Exactly. Good, Good job. Breathe in. Breathe out. Same spot every time. And then slowly squeeze. Okay. And relax in the. I have to say that firing in general was one of the best feelings that I've ever had. They get the feel of, all right, this is what it feels like. This is what it feels like when I pull the trigger. And they realize it's a totally different weapon than the M16. I love the Pico 6. It was a good way, it was a good technique in the beginning in the class time to learn different techniques of if you have to fight someone, how to do it and different techniques there. You're afraid of what? Falling You're not going to fall, and guess what? That's rubber down there if you do. It's going to catch you. Hands down. I'm waiting for the next one. One more to the ground. One more to the ground. Look at that. The ground's right there. Look at that. You made it. Thank you, sir. You made it. Three, four, go. Three, four, go. Everybody came together. We came as a group. We were no longer individuals. We were flight 115. Everybody helped each other out. I don't think that we had not one single person who wasn't motivating or chanting, trying to push the person in front of them. And it was a great exercise. That looked pretty hard, and I didn't, in the beginning, I doubted myself. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. But when it came to it, my adrenaline was pumping so fast and so hard that I did it no problem. And at the end of the day, here in your flight, cheering for you as you're running up to that last obstacle and you, you conquer it, I, I was very proud of myself that day. Should move and communicate. Get your wingman and go. Hey, once the barricade is open, go. Once that barricade in behind me clears, then you go. If there's open cover, that's time for you to move. Well, the Warrior Week that we had in BMT leading up to this was simply five days of both training and application. Here, we've given them six weeks of instruction, and it's up to the trainees to lead them th themselves through a full week of exercise. And basically, they have the tools. They need to find the appropriate tool to meet the mission in any, any given day. Move, move, move. Well, the goal of the beast is to ensure that every future airman possesses the skills to be a leader and step up. Just kind of lay a basis for future training before they wind up in a deployed environment. Hey, your wall's not open. Where are you going to go? Hey, where are you going? Where are you going? Uh, flight 115, led by Sergeant John Douglas. I am an American Airman, wingman, leader, warrior. I will never leave an airman behind. I will never falter, and I will not fail! It's been a long journey. Two months away from my family. It's well worth it.